Do you want to become a data analyst, but you're not quite sure where to get started with Python? Well, you are in the right place. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up your local Python environment step by step so that you can get started with your data projects in Python with confidence. This is the first video in my Python for Data Analysis series, where I will be covering everything from Python basics all the way to how to use libraries like pandas and numpy for data analysis. Now I'm going to actually show you two different setup options. The first is Anaconda, which is quick and beginner friendly to set up. And the second is using VS Code and PIP. This gives you a little bit more control over your environment and it's the setup that I use in my videos. So I wanted to go over how you can set it up for yourself as well. So first let's get started with option one, which is how to set up Anaconda. So to install Anaconda, the first thing you'll need to do is go to the Anaconda download link and I will link this in the description below. Now Anaconda is a collection of tools that includes things like Python and pandas and NumPy and and Jupyter Notebook all in one installation, which is why it is very beginner friendly to set up. Here we will skip registration. You can provide your email if you want. Um, I think you get like news and stuff from Anaconda, but I generally don't do that. So you can just skip registration and you're gonna come to these download links and I'm running Windows, so I'm gonna just click this uh, Windows download button. But if you're running Mac or Linux, you can see the installers here as well. So I'm gonna click download and you'll see it installing over here and it can take a couple minutes to download all right you can see the download is complete so we'll just cl double click on that so you'll see this window pop up which is the anaconda installer so all you have to do is click next agree to the terms and conditions and then install it just for you and it'll give you like a file path of where it's installing it generally that's in users your username and then it'll have the name anaconda 3 if you want a different location, you can click browse here and choose a different location, but I just keep it with the defaults. Click next, and then I'm gonna keep this as the default as well. You'll notice here that you are installing Python version 3.12 with Anaconda as well, but just leave these defaults and click install. Now this installation does take a little while. Um, I think it took me maybe around like five minutes. It gets to this point and then it takes a little bit of time for that last little bit. So we'll just let this install. All right, so you'll see the installation is completed. So we'll just click next and you'll see that the message that everything is set up. So click next again and we'll leave these defaults, click finish, and you'll actually see the Anaconda Navigator launch here shortly. All right, so this is the Anaconda Navigator and it does take like a minute or two for it to pop up after you install. So if it doesn't pop, pop up right away, don't worry. And when it does for the first time, you'll get like a sign in box. You can just X out of that. You don't need to sign up. But now that you've installed Anaconda, you actually have everything you need to start coding in Python. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Jupyter Notebook here. That's where you're going to write your code if you're using Anaconda and you're going to click launch. And what that will do is it'll launch Jupyter Notebook in your browser. Right, so you'll see it just popped up right there. Now let's just do a quick tour of the Jupyter Notebook environment. So this home page that it comes to is just a file explorer page for the different files that you can save in Jupyter Notebook. When you create a new Jupyter Notebook, it'll just save it down here. So let's actually create a Jupyter Notebook. So we'll go to new and we're going to go to Python 3 and that will open your Jupyter Notebook here. And what you can do in this notebook is you can write different Python code. You can add comments to your code and you can also visualize different things about your data using Python code. So the first thing we'll do in this Jupyter Notebook is we can actually rename the notebook here. So we can just call that uh, Notebook 1. You'll generally give it a more descriptive name than that, but this is what we'll call it. Now in a Jupyter Notebook, your code is organized into different cells. So this is one cell and these cells can have Python code and they can have markdown. So here's an example of a Python code. So we'll just print hello Jupyter, that's Python code. But if you add a cell, you can actually make this markdown. And what that is, it's just text. So we can say this is a markdown cell. And you'll see when we run this one, we get the printout of Hello Jupyter that's executing the Python code. And when we run this one, we actually just get this block of text. Now this is really useful just to add notation and documentation into your notebooks. And you notice before to run a cell, you just click this play button. And if you wanted to stop a cell from running, you would uh, press this pause button. You'll also see there's this like fast forward button 
what that will do is it'll run all the cells in your code. So when you run that, it'll actually restart the kernel of your notebook and run all the cells. So you'll see it's running this one as indicated by the star. And then once that has a number there, that means it's done running. We can also see that libraries like Python and NumPy are installed for us because we can import pandas and we won't get any errors. If it's not installed, it means you would see an error here that these libraries do not exist. So here you can see cell ran cor correctly, which means it is all installed. Now, as you're working in here, I would greatly suggest saving your notebook every few minutes. You can just click this here and you'll see up here, you'll see the last checkpoint, which is the last that you saved your notebook. So we can see we last saved it like eight seconds ago. We click that again. It should show that we saved it one second ago. So now when you go back to your home thing, you'll see that we have that notebook down here, notebook one, and you can also see which notebooks are running. You can see notebook one is running right now. And I would suggest when you're done running your notebooks, like when you're done coding in them and you're closing this environment, I would just click shut down all. And what this does is it just shuts down the pipe python 3 kernel so that it's not running and we don't want it to run if you know you're not running any code in there but that is actually all you need to do to set up anaconda and you're actually ready to go to start coding in python so like i said this one is really beginner friendly so next i'm going to show you how to set up your local environment to code in python using vs code and pip now, if you've set up Anaconda and that's the one you're comfortable with, feel free to go ahead with that one. You'll still be able to follow through with the rest of my Python tutorials. You'll just see that your notebook looks slightly different than mine, but the code's going to be exactly the same. So you're good to go. But this VS Code and uh, pip install is the setup that I use. So I just wanted to kind of show you how to set that up. It gives you a little bit more control over your environment if that's something that you're looking for. So let's get started with that. So with this, you're going to have to install things individually, unlike in Anaconda where everything comes installed. So the first thing we need to do is install Python. So I've added this link in the description, but you'll just go to python.org slash downloads and you will click this button, which will download the latest version of Python, which right now is 3.13, right? And you'll see it installs pretty quickly. So we'll just click on that and the Python installer comes up. Now here we generally want to keep the defaults, but we do want to make sure that this add Python to path is checked. And then we will click this install now button and your Python install will start. Now you'll see what's being installed right now is called pip. And what that is, is it is a package manager for Python. Anytime you want to install a package, things like pandas or numpy, numpy you'll use a command that's like pip install and then that package name. So like pip install pandas. And so pip is really just like an app store. It allows you to download whatever Python package you want. And that is automatically installed when you install Python. So you'll see our setup was successful. So we'll close this. And now we wanna make sure that Python was installed. So you can open your command prompt and then in here, just type in Python and then dash dash, you want two dashes and then version and click enter and you'll see we have Python 3.13 installed, which is the one we wanted installed. Now, next we're going to install VS Code. So you'll go to VS Code's download page. Again, it's linked in the description and you'll click on whichever installation is correct for you. So I'm on Windows, so I'm going to click this Windows installation. Starts downloading right here, right? So now we will open that installer and we're going to accept the agreement. It'll show you where it's installing this. Right. And then really, I just click through all of these. Um, I do click the create a desktop icon just so it's easier to access VS Code, but otherwise leave the defaults, click next and then click install. All right, it's done installing um, and this is checked. Make sure that's checked. So when we click finish, we'll just get Visual Studio will automatically open. All right, so here is VS Code. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to install some extensions and this will just make um, our code easier to read and things like that. So the ones we want to do are Python and that'll install Python and PyLance. We also want to install Jupyter so that we can use Jupyter Notebook inside VS Code. And then we also want to download the Python extension package, which comes with a couple of other things in it. Things like uh, Autodoc string, which makes documenting easier and Telecode, which is like AI assisted development. It also has things like Jang Django and Jinja installed as well, which are just good things to have. All right, so that should be all of our extensions. So when all is said and done, you should see like 16 as the number of things you have installed. Now, one thing I wanna show you in VS Code is that you'll use quite a bit, it's called terminal. So when you click up here, you'll see terminal 
and you can click new terminal and here it'll open up a PowerShell terminal for, for you. You can also open a command prompt. So like this is where we did the Python dash dash version and you can run that within VS Code and see that you're running Python 3.13.3. So now the next thing we want to do is create a Jupyter Notebook and there's a couple of ways to do that. The first is to go to File, New File, and you'll see this pop-up come up here and you can just click Jupyter Notebook and that will open up this Untitled One Notebook for you. And in here, this will, works just like it did in Anaconda. You can print Python code in here and here you can click Play right next to it and it'll ask you to select your Python environment. So you'll click on that. And if you have multiple versions of Python installed, you'll see them here. You can see I have 3.10 and 3.13 installed, but I'll click on 3.13. That will start to connect to that Python kernel. And once it connects, it'll run and it'll print Hello Jupyter. You can also do a markdown code. So this is a markdown cell. I'll just click this check mark here and you'll see it's a markdown cell. So it works just like a Jupyter Notebook in Anaconda because it's the same thing. Now, another way that you can create a Python notebook is if you go to file and like open folder and you open a folder, here's a folder I have of the Python tutorial. So here's a little sneak peek into what we're going to get into in the following weeks. But once you open a folder, you'll see a little file thing here. If you click on that, you can uh, type in like the file name and then give it a dot I P Y N B extension and that'll open a Jupyter Notebook as well. And now once you're in the Jupyter Notebook to install pandas and numpy, you'll run this, you'll run that pip install command. So you can run that from the terminal or you can just run it in your notebook. So you'll do an exclamation mark, which is also called like the bank operator and you'll do pip install pandas and you'll select your Python environment if it prompts you to, and you'll run this and you'll see that it will install pandas. And this can take a couple of minutes sometimes, so just let it run. Okay, so you can see that pip install took about a little over a minute to run for me, and you'll see that it installed pandas, and here you go, installing collected packages, numpy and pandas. Fun fact, when you install pandas, numpy gets installed with it, so you really just need to install pandas and you'll get numpy with it as well. All right, so that is the setup for uh, coding with Python using VS Code and pip, and this is the environment you'll see in the rest of the tutorials. But again, if you're using Anaconda, you can still follow along with the tutorials. It's just my environment will look like this and yours will look like how it does in Anaconda but that is the only difference. The code is the same. And like I promised at the end of the video, there would be a checklist. So if you installed Anaconda to make sure that you are set up correctly, make sure that you can open Anaconda Navigator. You can go to your start menu and search Anaconda Navigator. It should show up. Make sure you can launch a Jupyter Notebook from there. And once you open that notebook, you know, run different tests. Like make sure you can print stuff and do like a print hello world in Python. Make sure that's working and see if you can import pandas or numpy just to make sure that those are working as well. If you did the VS Code setup, make sure you're able to open VS Code. Make sure uh, you see the Python and the Jupyter extensions in VS Code and make sure you can create a notebook. You can also open a terminal and make sure that you have Python installed by doing the Python dash dash version. So if you have checked all these boxes for either installation that you did, then congratulations, you are ready to go to start coding in Python and start analyzing data. In the next video, we are going to get started with the Python basics, starting with variables. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that one. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I hope to see you in next week's Python tutorial. See you there.